It is Peter International Film Festival 2015, and we're on the set with Demetrius Charles and Kamaya from Kamaya Lizette. Um, so, Demetrius, you are producer of uh, Not My Mother and Ascension. Uh, yeah, Ascension, the tagline I am not my mother. Okay, yes. nice. That's a powerful title. Thank you very much. Can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, well, Ascension just tells the story of this, um, this beautiful poet who has been caught up in a slew of um, abusive relationships mm -hmm. um, from a father to her husband and who has this wonderful heart but who just, who, who has been stuck in, in this, in this in this um, sort of relationship with men, and whose best friend Jay is trying to help her get out of it. Okay, yeah. well, that sounds really interesting, especially the fact that she's, she's, I mean, a poet. So does she yeah. use her expression? How does she help her come out of that? Uh, yes, actually, Justin introduced, well, not Justin, but Jay, the character, mm -hmm. her best friend, um, introduced her to um, the poetry jam and a, a, a way for her to to really um how, how can i put it really relieve herself of all of that tension of all of that 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 that, that pain and to find a different way to to just express herself yes so what was your inspiration because that's a very um particular and very precise you know concept. topic yeah, yeah. So like, what was your inspiration behind well, first of all, I mean, I, I, I grew up in St. Lucia, so I definitely saw that hands off. I mean, I saw a lot of it happening with my neighbors, and some of it is from our personal, from personal experiences with bad people in my family. I really hate the fact that men, even women, raise their hands on their spouse. Yes. Uh, it really disturbs me and I wanted to find a way not to just tell your normal story or your everyday abuse or spousal abuse story. So I had to find those little elements or these little areas where I could make, make the movie stand out. Yeah. So I had to find a beautiful soul, a beautiful heart. So that's, there's nothing more beautiful than poetry in my, in my, in my, in my book. So I, I, I went that route. Yes. In your book too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and obviously, I mean, the topic is very, very sensitive. When you were filming, I mean, how were you able to to show that sensitivity without being, you know, graphic or without going into an integrity of? Yes, sometimes I, I I don't think it's always necessary to 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 bring on that harsh reality mm -hmm. of I'm uh, beating the person down. I mean, you only need to show it just once, mm -hmm. so people could identify with what's happening. Um. But there are so many other ways you could tell that story, and there are so many other ways you could you could show the abuse from um, whoever the, um, the abuser is. Yeah, and showing mm -hmm. the effects on the character. Yes, and you get to find out a lot about it through poetry, which is beautiful. Yeah. And we're gonna see a session today. Yes. That's exciting. Yes. Thank, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. <coughs> Thanks, Thank right? you. So Everything about me is beautiful, both inner and outer, because I love myself. Well, I think I'm beautiful because God made me that way and He's the best, so I say that I am beautiful in my own way. I think we're beautiful, don't 
you think? I think you are. I know I am. So beautiful, so beautiful, just like the stars. Hi, so we're here with Ayo Robinson, and she's leading actress in Ascension, one of the films we're going to see today. Um, tell us about your role in Ascension and how you found it. Um, well, I've worked with Demetrius and Courtney before, and um, in theater, and so Demetrius wrote this script and called me up and said, I have a role for you, and I was all the way in California, and I said, yes, please and flew across the country and spent a few months in New York shooting film. You played the lead role, I is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was it for you? It was great. It was a, an amazing experience. It's um, my first feature length film, so I learned a lot. And, um, the, it, it, <laughs> um, and the differences between um, film and theater, it just, it felt really good. It's like really good exercise as an actress to tone down everything from the stage yeah. for the camera, yeah. you know, it was so, yeah, so that was a lot of fun and always a blast to work with friends, so. Yeah. How long have you been acting for? Um, you know, since school, since I was a little kid, um, I loved it. I, my parents, my mom and my older sister 
who is much, she's nine years older than me, they used to watch the soap operas on yeah. TV, and I wasn't allowed to watch them, so I would kind of creep up the steps and just be able to listen, and you know, I think that that influenced me a lot, just that, that people were so captivated, um, and that they were so connected with characters. Uh, I really liked that, and I really wanted to move people, um, either in a positive way, or bring them to tears, or whatever that was. That's where I power trip is in front of the camera, you know? <laughs> what was the most challenging for you working on this specific project? Um, I would say the content of the piece because um, it's very heavy and um, you know there's a there's a certain scene um, where you know I had to pull a lot of emotion and it was just me so there was no other actor to feed off of and it was just this you know it just had to come from raw emotion and raw experience and we had to shoot that scene once and then we actually had to do it again so going back to do it twice, having to go there, it was really difficult. So I would just say the content of it, you know, just the places that I had to go in my own mind to get the, the work across was, was hard. Yeah. And now that you've done a feature length film, yeah. I mean, you said that your theater is like your, what are you been doing? I love theater, yeah. I love because you can just, yeah, you go on and it's, that's it. Like once you leave the, the like, the wings, you are that character and there's no going back, right. you know, so, but. So how do you, theater or film, which are you being told both, or where? You know, both. I have a, I have a huge respect for both of the mediums, um, and I, I do appreciate that film reaches, can reach a lot more people, um, so that I really do appreciate, because I've grown up abroad, and so I have friends all over the world, and it's, you know, I know that this is a, a whole global community, um, and theater is just very limited, but I do love that raw impact of theater as well. And having that audience, right? And having the audience right there, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And St. Lucia. <gasps> St. Lucia. How has your experience since you've been able to travel with your team to be here? I love it. I mean, that is so much fun. Traveling with um, with people from the cast and with Demetrius, like that is just, it's been a joy. Um, St. Lucia is beautiful and hot and I love it and I love the ocean. And it reminds me of Tanzania where I spent nine years of my childhood. So it's oh, making wow. me a little homesick. Oh. Yeah. You're welcome. You can come here anytime. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you, ladies. That was great. Thank you, ladies. <laughs>
And that some wave ownership claims so great upon woman, house and land that they walk around heavy sacked and loaded, ready to shoot, slam, dunk, explode and semen into any fertile soil they were going. Or some limp impotently with no ink in their pen to erect fair legislation. And their only proclamation of what makes them men is to sit in the company of friends and attribute monetary validation to the sack that lets the biggest screw loose. I say, I bet. The stories get their heads wet with trippy ideas on how to keep their woman, house and land in check. Because let's face it, Insecurity and crazy are cheaper provisions to feed their lady Sold to them by media moguls as household commodities Leaving us in microcosms of pain Where queens feel unworthy and counteract with faces down, asses up Wearing boys to fight in their defense Only for them to be backed up against walls with their hands up True stories For these are the works of blasphemers who called themselves masters Now don't get my words twisted for worthy are those who attempt to transform centuries of pain into fuel to rebuild our houses in strength and maintain families. Worthy are those able to distinguish a princess through her discomfort at the prodden pee under imposed mattresses of social distress. Yes, they size the pain down to the pee in the hope that we will make light of the plight that we face daily. Yes, worthy is the man who grows in compassion and sensibility for the wounds that create men. And he was one of them. Yet being overwhelmed by society's placement, he stepped out in confused chaos and found a voice that was void of the authenticity of the original model that he was bred to be. A catalyst of change no longer, he shriveled under the weight of the responsibility of being the shepherd and leading men, of saving humanity. Trodden on somewhat lopsided on the wrong side of balance with sacks of freight and a staff filled with lead too heavy to filter and articulate the teachings of the matriarchal foundations on which he was raised. Notably ignoring the nurturing from tender breasts which were his plate. Yet, if it remains his innate desire to free Willie to roam free willingly, who am I to judge what is presumably the nature of man? Right? Yet I stand, a little bent but not broken, bruised but outspoken, basking in the opulence of queenly character, I widely flourish amidst weeds of social mess, and yes, in my strength I resiliently remind him of that tribe called She from whence he came, and I encourage him to learn himself and his wealth, and so he knows I'm great. And though it is not him that I blame, he continues to make mistakes, fervently scared to be vilified like the rest of it. He knows that greatness leaves little room for mediocrity or conformity. He's scared of his own great ability and petrified of the pressure of continuously having to match the best of me because he knows I am great.